I'd like to draw your attention to some of the more precious volumes in this marvelous collection of Bill's personal library. First, uh, we have two volumes of Democracy in America by Alexis de Tocqueville. These two volumes were part of the four volume series published in 1840. One of the things about these two volumes is that they are inscribed to Mill by Tocqueville. That makes them particularly valuable. Moreover, they have something quite unique, and that is annotations on the flyleaves of both volumes referring to pages in the text. Now, Mill wrote an extended essay on democracy in America in the Edinburgh Review later in 1840. And to my knowledge, no biographer or scholar on Mill or de Tocqueville has ever seen these annotations before I opened these books a couple of years ago. The second of the two volumes that I'd like to bring to your attention are the Emerson Essays, published in London in 1841 and 1844. They are the volumes that made Emerson's reputation in America as a leading political philosopher. So what we have here are Mill's copies, Mill being the greatest political philosopher in the English-speaking world, his copies of the most remarkable American political thinker and social thinker of the 19th century. The two had, in fact, met in the 1830s, but did not get along. Now, the general view is that Mill never read any of Emerson's writings, but these two volumes show very clearly that Mill read with great care and attention the essays by Ralph Boulder Emerson. If Emerson were to read the annotations, he wouldn't have been happy. Stupid, very stupid, trash, pretentious, nonsense. These are among the words scribbled in the margins by Mill. Perhaps it was inevitable that a rather arid logician like Mill wouldn't take to a transcendental religious figure like the Ralph Waldo Emerson. What's interesting is this changes the relationship between the two of them quite dramatically. It also tells us a good deal about Mill himself because he's quite revealing and acerbic in his annotations in the various volumes in this library, whereas his published writings were always rather straightforward, without any meanness of spirit. The next volume I'd like to bring to your attention is this French translation of On Liberty, published in 1860. Mill did not do the translation, but he was very fluent in French. And what's so intriguing about this volume, when you open it, is that there are a large number of corrections of the French by Mill himself, which shows uh, another side of his character is very didactic. Uh, passion for correction. Finally, uh, one of the treasures of the Mill collection here is The Descent of Man, published by Charles Darwin in 1871. These two volumes are the first edition of The Descent of Man, and they are inscribed by the author to Mill. So what we have here is a fantastic collection of folks 2,000 strong or so, probably the greatest personal library of an individual in any of the Oxford colleges. And I'd like to think that when people thought of uh, Somerville College, they automatically associated that with John Stuart Mill, because Mill represents everything that Somervillians like to think about themselves, progressive, liberal, and feminist. We're incredibly lucky to have this library.